Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Dum Dum, that's me, preached a sermon this morning or early this afternoon, and Dum Dum, that's me, forgot to record it. So now what Dum Dum is going to do is read the word and share a few little short snippets in video form to let you know what we discussed today. God bless you as you hear God's word, followed by Pat's Two Cents. All right, now we're reading from Joshua, if I only could turn to it, <laughs> Joshua chapter 7, and this is about the battle of Ai and how they suffered defeat and why. And some of us in our lives suffer defeat and we wonder why. Okay, well, listen to this. And let me preface this by saying this. God will not allow his blessings to cohabit with curses. Hmm. All right, now, I'm going to tell you the quick story. Starting with verse 1, the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan... The son of Carney, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, and the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now, okay. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. Now, past two cents. Joshua had no clue what was going on. So he sends these guys to spy out and see what's up, and they come back with a good report. Oh, you don't need to send all the soldiers up. Just send about 3,000. We're good to go. We'll knock them out in a New York minute. Loose paraphrase, but you get my point. All right. Now, they get up there to fight the battle, and what happens? 30-something people die, and the rest of them turn tail and run because our AI whoops their behind. And they're wondering, why, why, why? Here we go. Now, Joshua is just on his face. He is just devastated. And this is what it says. Verse 7. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, wherefore has thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been con content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? Hmm. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, which means deceived. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because... Because they were accursed, neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. You get me now? Pat's too sin. God will not cohabit with curse. Curses of any kind. He's a blessing. And he will not allow himself to commingle with cursed things. And many of us as born again Christians believe we can have a little of this and a little of that and it's okay. And it's not, not with God. To us, yes. But remember the Bible warns us, there is a way that seemeth right unto the man, but unto man, but the end of that way is the end of death. Loose quote, but you get me. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Now, I know this is going to sound real superstitious, and it's not. This is my way of saying there is nothing that has the enemy's name, affiliation, practices, none of his 
his idols will I have in my house? So even though a thing as simple as dirt devil, it's just a brand name for a vacuum. It's not running around casting spells on people. It's cleaning up dirt. But you know why I won't have that brand in my house, even if it's the best in the market and the cheapest? It's because I will have nothing to do with an enemy of God. If it's an enemy of God, I don't want its name anywhere near my property. Even though they may have chosen the name in jest, I won't have it in my house, not even as a joke. Because Satan ain't funny to me. All right. Now, check this out. I want you to hear this. This is this is a trip. Now, after he gets through begging and pleading and snotting and crying, okay, and he, and he ex explains all that. Verse 13, this is what God tells Joshua to do. Get up. So he says, up. Sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. All right. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And he tells them how they're going to come in the order and this one and that one and groups and individuals, families and groups and individuals. And he goes through all that. Then he says this. All right. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah. And he took the family of the Zarhites and brought the family of the Zarhites man by man. And Zabdi was taken. And he brought his house man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, <laughs> give, I pray thee, glory to God to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils of goodly, uh, the goodly apparel let me say that again. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I covered it, which means I desired. I covered, coveted them and took them and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent the messengers, and they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them in unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel went, with, went and took Achan, the son of, Z of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised a heap over him, a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Now, later on in verse 8, it talks about how they went back to fight Ai under God's instructions, and God let them know, you're going to win, and they won. They won the battle. 
Why? Because the accursed thing was removed out of their midst for good and destroyed. Hmm. Check that out. So some of you who think you can dabble, you can play, it's 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 got a lot of worth to it. It's got, you know, some of you live off of blood money. You buy some, somebody buys something for you. And you got something and you know that person is a drug dealer or you know that person is a thief or you know the person deals with all kind of of underhanded corruption and and you know that Whatever they have is ill-gained. It's, it's, it's not cool to have. You know it's not a holy accomplishment. But you accept the gift because it's valuable, it's pretty, and you want it. Well, guess what? You have just allowed an accursed thing into your life. See, you have to be very, very careful about stuff like that because you think that it's not a big deal. You didn't go out and commit the crime. You didn't kill the person whose item you now hold in your hand. You didn't kill him, but guess what? You're participating in the crime of murder. You are an accessory after the fact in God's eyes because you have accepted a blood gift, a gift that shed innocent blood. You have accepted it. Because you desired it, you lusted after, you coveted it, and you got to have it. Well, guess what? Just because you didn't shoot the bullet, just because you didn't shove the knife, does not make you innocent. No, that cursed thing being in your house, you knowing where that thing came from, that makes you just as guilty. So, then you wonder why all hell starts breaking loose in your house, and your family. All right. Now, that's one case. And I shared a number of things, but I'm not going to be long on this. I just want you to know, and we'll share some more in the next video. I just want you to know, God doesn't play. No, no, no. God is not a two-faced God. We're either on the right side or the wrong side. So you decide what side you're going to be on. Hmm. The ball's in your court.